In planning its aggression against Poland, Germany prepared in advance for the possible response of its Polish allies, France, and Great Britain. The task of restraining the British and French at sea fell to the Reich's naval forces, the Kriegsmarine. Back in August 1939, the German Navy began to prepare for a possible war, withdrawing in the Atlantic, pocket battleships, and submarines. The latter took up positions from Rockall Bank to Gibraltar. By September 3, 1939, there were 18 German submarines in the Atlantic. In the event of hostilities, the command of the Kriegsmarine expected to collect in the Atlantic abundant harvest of sunk ships, making a solo voyage. To maximize the effect of a sudden blow to shipping, Donuts prepared a reserve. In the event of the outbreak of war, seven, U-31, U-32, and U-35 were ready to go to sea to replace the boats returning to bases. U-32 left port on September 5th. According to the original plan, she was to get to the Atlantic through the English Channel. But soon the commander of the submarine forces changed his decision. Thanks to the interception of radio messages, Dunitz learned that the British began mining the Strait of Dover. So he gave U-32 an order to go into the Atlantic, bypassing the British Isles from the north. 31 and U-35 left Wilhelmshaven on September 9th. In order to shorten the time to reach the ocean, the commander sent them by the shortest route across the English Channel. Dunitz based his decision on the report of the commander of one of the two returned from Dover. According to his data, the passage of the boat through the channel has not yet threatened anything. Only U-31 was sent to the channel. The British submarine Ursula gave Lot's crew a baptism of fire, firing four torpedoes at U-35 at close range. But fortune was favorable to the Germans that day. They managed to dodge the British deadly cigars. The crew of the U-35 saw this as a good sign of a happy end to the first combat campaign. Submariners were not mistaken, so it turned out. Luck did not leave the submarine Lada and the night of September 12th, when she was in a surface position. Literally nose to nose collided with a British destroyer. The opponents separated on the counter courses at a distance of 200 meters. The Germans were very surprised that the British did not notice them. The next day, the Seven was attacked by enemy aircraft that dropped bombs. However, the boat did not receive serious damage from the nearby explosions, finishing only broken light bulbs. By September 18th, Lot had rounded Scotland from the north and entered the Atlantic, west of the Hebrides Islands. Here he discovered the British fishing trawler St. Elvis. At first, the Germans decided to sink it. When the boat surfaced next to the fisherman, his crew quickly lowered the dinghy and left the ship. However, Lot changed his mind about destroying the trawler. He realized that the dinghy has a low side and the British are unlikely to get on it to land. The commander of the submarine allowed them to go back and, ordering them to throw into the sea radio equipment, let the St. Elvis back to the sea. In the evening of the same day, U-35 found three trawlers. Lot acted as humanly as possible. He allowed the crew of two vessels to lower their boats and move to the third. The Germans then sank both fishermen with artillery fire, making sure their crews were picked up by the remaining trawler. Curiously, the British were not at all offended by the Germans. They appreciated the submariners' humanitarianism with applause and wanted to share with them the food available on the surviving trawler. Lot politely declined and, bidding farewell to the enemies, set a course southward. According to the available orders, U-35 was to operate at the western entrance to the English Channel. On the morning of September 21st, the boat arrived at the position. As Lot noted in his log, he intended to keep closer to the English coast than to the French coast. This decision proved to be correct, as in the afternoon, the fumes of a convoy appeared on the horizon. It was the OOA-7, which on September 19th left Southend on sea, with three dozen ships escorted by three destroyers. Lot decided to attack the enemy, and in an underwater position began to approach the convoy. Coming to a convenient position, the boat successively attacked three targets. The first eel, intended for the destroyer, 
did not hit the target. The second salvo was fired at a vessel of 9,000-10,000 B, whose nationality and name remained unknown to Lot. Through the periscope, the boat commander observed an explosion off its side. The third torpedo U-35 fired at a huge Abbeydale-type tanker. This time, Lot did not see the result of the attack, but heard the explosion. The commander of the seven believed that his torpedoes had hit two targets. In reality, it was not so. Only the British tanker Tickwood, which was traveling in ballast and remained afloat after torpedoing, was hit. Interestingly, it went down in history as the first vessel in the convoy to be hit by submarine torpedoes during the Battle of the Atlantic. Accordingly, the attack made by U-35 is the first successful attack by a German U-boat on a convoy in World War II. Immediately after the last salvo, Lot took the boat to a depth of 70 meters. However, due to an error in taking on ballast, control of the submarine was lost, and she hit the bottom at a depth of 115 meters. The Germans were surprised that nothing happened to her because U-35 exceeded the design depth limit for Type 70A boats, set at 100 meters. But the surprises for them did not end there. The British destroyer Ardent began searching for the boat, but was unable to pinpoint its exact location. The contact received by the ASDIC was doubtful, and Ardent dropped just one depth bomb to clear their conscience. As it turned out, it was one of the most accurate bombing missions of the entire war. The depth bomb exploded near the boat's deckhouse, disabling one of the periscopes and damaging the ballast perg system. Seven began to float uncontrollably, and it was difficult to stop the process. After waiting for the destroyers to leave, Lot surfaced. U-35 continued her voyage.